And even more delightful, it's my pleasure to introduce the wonderful soul delivering the message this morning. Reverend Anne, we are delighted to have such a gem in our life. The calmness, the efficiency, the internal beauty. The external beauty. <laughs> no, Reverend Anne is truly a delight to have in our world, and I have just great pleasure in introducing her to share her message to you this morning. Reverend Anne. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Thanks, Clive, for those wonderful words. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for being here with us this morning. And a special welcome to our ecumenical chorale. And we have those joining us on the World Wide Web. So this morning, I want to share my thoughts on the connection between our prayers which indeed out pictures as our everyday experiences and the underlying framework of trust. In the words of the beautiful Jesus, our way sure, from Mark 11, verses 23 to 24, and I quote, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Verse 24, therefore I say unto you, what things so, soever you desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them, end of quote. I repeat for emphasis, which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. When ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. This is the formula for prayer. Which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. When ye pray, believe what, that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. In other words, what you say shall come to pass and you will have whatever you ask for. When you pray, believe that you will receive whatever you have asked for. But yet there are times when the doubt that the Jesus away sure mentioned in verse 23 arises in the matter of the efficacy of our prayers, which is the ability to produce an intended result. We teach that all prayers are indeed answered. So if there is doubt, then the intended result is more doubt. If there is certainty and trust, result is answered prayer. But let, not, let me not get ahead of myself. H. Emily Cady of How I Use Truth fame stated, and I quote, from the smallest thing of our everyday life to the rolling away of the largest stone of difficulty from our path, this presence will deliver us. But its working depends on our trusting, and trusting means getting still inside, end of quote. Who is the presence who will deliver? Why did Jesus, the way Shua stated, when we pray, believe that we receive? Believe what? The Psalmist David in chapter 25 states, oh my God, I trust in thee. Chapter 37, trust in the Lord, and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed." End of quote. The emergence again of the word trust. The presence that will deliver, and the Lord who will ensure that we are fed. Dr. Holmes, the founder of our teaching states, unless our vision reaches higher, broader, and deeper than the state which we wish to change, how can we hope to change it? If we become confused by the suggestion of appearance, real as it is, actual as it must be considered to be in human experience, how can we hope to transform it? It is not suggestion, but inner transformation that heals. 
And this inner transformation is the birth of a new state of consciousness, a state of consciousness which no longer depends upon the condition as it appears to be, but which reaches through the seen to the unseen, which plunges beneath the surface and arrives at the spiritual cause of things. He goes on to say that when that we would affirm, let me repeat that again, that we would affirm that an attitude of trust is certainly better than one of doubt. And what we affirm is this, that there's a spiritual presence in the universe which manifests itself through the object to which we give our attention and that it manifests itself at the level of our consciousness about that thing to which we give our attention, end of quote. Simply in our prayers, we give our attention to that which we desire to manifest. And the universal spiritual presence, the unseen God, as supply, substance, through us, what we say, think, and act, out pictures, projects itself as the gifts we desire to demonstrate, that which shows up in our everyday lives. The presence that delivers, the God that will provide that what we need to be fed. But what of this word trust? The Oxford Dictionary states, it is a firm belief in the reliability, truth, or ability of someone or something and the acceptance of the truth of a statement without proof. Truth denotes reliability, acceptance of a truth even without evidence. So we rely on that presence to deliver, but something happens to us in the process of praying, in the process of trusting. Katie reminds us trusting means getting still inside, or Dr. Holmes states, that when we go higher, broader, deeper than the state we wish to change, inner transformation gives birth to a new state of consciousness, movement from the seen to the unseen, which leads to the emergence of the desired state through us. Dr. Holmes states, which I think is so, so succinct, do we not pray for a harvest when we plant the seed? Are not seed time and harvest two ends of one law? Prayer and acceptance are two ways of recognizing the divine giving, which says, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. This, is a, this part of the quote is taken from the parable of the prodigal son the promise of the Father to the Son. That same promise to us as beloveds of the Most High. That is our truth. We are one with God and one with all. So in the process of praying with and of acceptance, trust is indeed an integral part of that formula. Dr. Holmes continues, it is not because of much speaking that we are heard but rather because of deep, earnest, and prayerful acceptance. In this divine communion, you should not try to think out beforehand what words you are going to use. Your words should be the outcome of a deep inner conviction which goes beyond words, but which at the same time gives birth to them. So in the process of trust, we give birth to a new consciousness that outpictures our intention, that which we give attention to. The Sanskrit word for prayer, pal-al, means literally judging oneself to be wondrously made. So in prayer, we arrive at the truth of our being and allow the flow of infinite possibilities to be revealed are coming to full expression in our lives and affairs. So I looked at the word trust and what really happens as a result of our prayers. An inner transformation takes place. So when we pray, expect change. Alan Cohen tells a story that aids us. 
Once there lived in a village of creatures along the bottom of a great crystal river. Each creature in its own manner clung tightly to the rocks and twigs of the river bottom. For clinging was their way of life and resisting the current was what each had learned from birth. One creature said at last, I am tired of clinging. Though I cannot see it with my eyes, I trust that the current knows where it is going. I shall let go and let it take me where it will. The other creatures laughed and said, fool, let go and that current you worship will throw you tumbled and smashed across the rocks. Yet in time, as the creature refused to cling again, the current lifted him free from the bottom and he was bruised and hurt no more. This creature trusted the current of which he had no prior knowledge, but felt he could safely rely on the current to take it wherever it was going. So in the process of trust, something happened. And in breaking down the letters of trust, let's start with T. You have a horizontal bar that is um, supported by a vertical bar. At that point of support, there is unity. And in that trusting, transformation takes place. When we go within by prayer to the stillness of our hearts, tranquility, T, tranquility reigns. And inner peace when there is conviction. We move from that conviction to R, which is reconciliation. What does that mean to us? The intention to move from being uncomfortable to the desired state. When we are totally convinced of the falsity of the old beliefs and ready to shift and give birth to a new mental causation. That's from Troward. Reconciliation takes place by forgiving oneself of staying clinging to the old ways, the old paradigms, and seeking a new way of being. Seek ye first the kingdom. Reconciliation gives way to you, unity. Hmm? The, uni the union found within the stillness of our souls, where we find the presence that delivers. That universal spiritual presence ready to outpicture and project into our experience the desired good. Always this perfect union of the creator and the created. From this union, we are strengthened, S, for strength, which gives rise to our deliverance. The kingdom is at hand right where we are. From strength, we are sustained until the new consciousness gives birth to the new idea seeking to demonstrate itself in our world of affairs. So yes, when we pray and trust, no matter what appears in the interim, our inner strength allows us to look past from what we do not want to the promise to a, of a new state of being. We are strengthened to stay constant in our prayer work or whatever spiritual practices we may utilize, whether it's meditation, sitting in the silence, singing, anything that will help us to stay strong in the face of seeming discouragement. And that final letter again is T, transcendence, which means we have shifted beyond in consciousness from old beliefs, patterns of thought which no longer serve us, behavior that sabotage our growth and unfoldment and plain old stuff that means bondage. So trust means tranquility, reconciliation, unity, strength, and transcendence. Yes, transcendence. So from the words of our textbook, when we pray, it is not willing things to happen. It is to provide within ourselves an avenue through which they may happen. It opens up the thought, the avenues of thought, expands the consciousness and lets reality through. It clarifies the mentality, removes the obstruction of thought, and lets in the light. It removes doubt and fear in the realization of the presence of spirit, end of quote. This is the trust factor, the framework on which we hang our affirmative prayers. So we can trust the process of living. We do not have to fear obstacles or feeling silly when we make mistakes, 
or missing the mark. As we awaken each day by being constant in our prayers and spiritual practices, we must succeed in the art of living. One of our ladies in our program at the Correctional Facility at South Camp Road proudly announced on graduation day that I am a success story. That is not a wishing statement. It is a trusting statement of intention. I am a success story. So we have to remain real and allow the strength of our prayers to move us through the journey of unfoldment with trust and courage. We are never ever separated from our good unless we use our filters of thought that deny that good. But thank God, our good is always at hand, a prayer away. We must continue to exercise our trust in order to enjoy the benefits of an abundant life that has already been given to us. We can open our minds to the inherent possibilities that emerge from every situation and shift from mere belief to know that we know with certainty and effortlessness in the pursuit of our endeavors. We invest in natural living with open hearts. No necessity for judgment, defensiveness. We celebrate each day with the guarantee of trust and continued prayer work. We walk in trust because we know who our inner guide and guardian is. That wisdom, presence, and power within us will provide the information necessary for our life's journey. We just have to learn to listen. And that is what we do when we turn always inside for answers. Before every step we take, every thought we need to verbalize. Friends, if we choose to listen, and I quote, all of heaven and earth will rush to fill your every need, for you have chosen to take the hand of the one who knows the way to peace, end of quote. Alan Cohen shares another story which I summarize. <laughs> a friend of his was driving home late one night in New York City. She stopped at a red light and she noticed the man in the car next to her was trying to get her attention. He was driving a big red Cadillac with a Playboy, hang, a Playboy bunny hanging from the rear view mirror with lots of loud music blazing. He waved to her. She ignored him. She stepped on the gas and moved to the next light before his car. Well, at the next light, there he was again. <laughs> well, this time he came right up near to her car and rapped on the window. She looked the other way. When the light turned to green, she stepped on the gas, shooting forward. Next light, the scene repeated itself. But something shifted in her. And she decided to roll down the window and started to asterisk XX. He quietly responded, your lights are off. <laughs> no, I leave that story with you for thought. It is familiar to us and can be applied to other facets of our lives. Not necessarily the attention of a man in a red car with a bunny hanging with loud music rapping on the windows of our consciousness, but the real truth of our being wanting to be revealed through us is. The seeming appearances that make us uncomfortable every day rapping on the windows of our consciousness saying, change me. So I will remind you again of the use of the word trust. So each time we go within, when we pray, we experience tranquility, reconciliation, union, strength, and ultimately transcendence. So I end with a quote, God is my strength. God is my power. God is my assured victory. I will trust in him and he will bring it to pass. End of quote. Namaste.